This week on One Crazy Story, I got lunch with the great Ken Calvert. It's like, here, I've never heard a comic say that. Boy, yeah. hey, let me like, <laughs> share a little secret with you. I found a way to bomb. I found that a way no, that nobody else is. When using. it's not going good, I've got some some my own tricks that. Do you have a handgun? Maybe a you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, M80s. <laughs> don't make me like this. Yeah, because I don't know where it's gonna go. Hello and welcome to another edition of One Crazy Story. I'm your host Nate Armbruster, and this week I got lunch with Ken Calvert. Ken and I have become pretty good friends over the last year or so, and I've helped him out with his podcast uh, entitled The Ken Calvert Show. So while you're here, if you are a fan of Ken's or if you remember him uh, from back in the day, you may have heard him on the air. You definitely recognize his voice if you're from the Detroit area. But he's also doing a very cool podcast that you can check out, and it's available everywhere you can find podcasts, obviously. Ken's a great guy and uh, invited me out to lunch to record an episode of his podcast, and to give you an idea of how cool Ken Calvert is, is uh, so we met over at this restaurant near Ken's house. We walked to the back of the restaurant and found a table that was kind of, you know, off in the distance away from people. This way, nobody would bother us, I guess. You know, you don't want to be too much of a distraction with microphones and headphones and, you know, just people start asking questions. But as we sit down, there's only one other table nearby. There's two guys getting lunch. And just before we were about to hit record, one of the guys comes over to the table and says, hey, I was an intern on your radio show back in 92. And I just wanted to say uh, you were awesome. And he said all these nice things about Ken. And I was like, so I've only known Ken for a year or so. I mean, and he's been very nice, great guy. And you would think like a guy that's been around in that business for so long, he's obviously a great guy. But sometimes you get to see someone just prove it to you. Or I'm like, wow, that guy remembers you from 25 plus years ago. That's crazy. He remembers you, and he remembers the impact you had in his life. And then Ken goes, well, what are you doing now? Are you still in the business or whatever? And the guy's like, nah, just real estate, But <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how awesome Ken Galvert is. Uh, he seems to have a very positive impact on anyone that crosses paths with him, especially me. Now enjoy this week's episode with myself and Ken Calvert. Broadcasting from the studios of WKEN, where every day it's the weekend. It's the Ken Calvert Show with your host, uh, Ken Calvert. Okay, so, so we're rolling. Here. So we're rolling. Okay, so we're rolling. And now, what normally happens when you start to roll is you get way too excited about the idea of doing it, and you just start all of a sudden getting way over the top. But. Uh, Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Ken Calvert Show, WKEN, the Casual Studios. Ken Calvert, every day is the weekend. Nate Armbruster, appearing tonight in Ann Arbor. Nate, how are you? I'm good, Ken. It's always good to have you. You've been always. a regular on the program, and uh, in the background, we apologize for the noise, but we're broadcasting from a bar, and that would be the sound of the Michigan-Ohio State game. Not looking real good right now for Michigan, <laughs> but hey, we got a lot of football left, as they like to a say. A lot of football. A lot, a lot of, of football, football left. left yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Nate and I were uh, talking about this earlier today, and uh, I got a friend on Facebook, and his name is Rip. His name is Rip. That's R-I-P. his first name. Yeah, his first name. And, um, well, it, actually, that's his nickname. So it's, uh, I think it's like Richard um, uh, Innes, um, you know, Peroni. And um, so he just, he's always gone by Rip, okay, because his last name is hard to say. So it's R dot, or actually period, R right. period, I period. P period. So these are initials, yeah. These are his initials, and every time he starts a sentence, it's like, you know, you know, it yeah. says R.I.P., and I always think Someone died. somebody just died. That's and hilarious. I'm trying to find a way to, you know, to tell Rip, look, why don't you go back to Richard, you know, yeah. and maybe uh, soften that up a little bit and maybe go with Dick. Well, yeah, I was going to say, he you sounds know? like a real Richard. He sounds like a real Dick. <laughs> he? he sounds more like a Dick than a, than a, than a Rip, or maybe even a Richard, but... Yeah. Uh, so it is. So all is well, and you're working tonight in Ann Arbor. Yes, sir. All yes, right. yes. Last night we had two last night and two more tonight. Okay, and um, last night second slow, second show a little slow. Yeah, 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 which is always interesting. Well, which is you know, yeah, it's fun though. It's fun because it, you know you have you could have ten people in an audience, yeah, but if ten people are enjoying the show, sure. it's amazing. What would the odds as opposed to 150 where three of them are interested, yeah, the rest right. of them, you know, are just staring at you like, why are you standing on the stage, man? It's a good point. Now, I've what, had it happen. If you've had a 
you've, you've got a room of ten, and what if one you've got one heckler in that group? Oh man, I light him up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, I'll get because that's the thing. It's so. There's intimate. no way that a heckler can win, right? No, okay. I don't think so. I oh. think I think anyone. I mean, I've seen it go bad, mm-hmm. but like. If the comic knows what he's doing, which you know you learn quickly, I think yeah. you know that you you have all the power. You have the microphone, right. so you automatically anything you say is better, and it doesn't even have to be smart or clever. Like I yeah. mean, you can get you can get through it without having to be funnier. You just have to, you know. I mean, I mean, you get the drunk guy yelling stuff out, and it's just like, what do you do? Yeah. And then people, I don't know. It's so there's you can get through it without. And then come out of it without dying, you know. Yeah, what I mean? I, but I, then you see, but when you see someone really, really light someone up in such a smart, clever way, that's when you go, "Oh, this guy is brilliant, man!" Yeah. Like that's, I love seeing it. Well, I I know that uh, what was the um, the one that um, I used to um, I remember somebody um, there, there was a girl heckling somebody I forget who the comedian was and he said, "Hey, I don't jump on the bed when you're working." <laughs> I always yeah. thought that was a great line. Yeah, that's a great line. And there was another, I, there, there, and then there was always the, hey, you know, do I bust your chops when I pick up the food at the drive thru? Right. You know, one of those things. Right. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, usually if the crowd, the crowd usually is always pulling for the comic to let the oh, heckler yeah. have it. Because usually the heckler's so annoying the audience, yeah. too. The audience wants you to shut the guy up. Yeah, or they're, right. They want, you know, someone to shut him up, yeah, you know? Yeah. And like, but you don't want some guy who's drunk. All of a sudden, deciding to take it into his own hands and then turning it into some sort of a violent, yeah. You know, hey, you son of a bitch! I've seen people get like turn angry, but see, I, I don't think my vibe. I, I don't really. I don't get like political, or I don't. I don't talk about my subject matter. Isn't anything that I don't. I mean, I don't intend to. Uh, I don't think anything I say would really piss someone off, but. Yeah. It, I I notice most of the heckling that I deal with are people in the audience who are having a good time. Yeah. But they're too drunk yeah. and they think they're contributing, but they're not. Yeah. But they but really they're having a good time. And so if anything, they just it's like it's just like you're interrupting, but you're interrupting to tell me I'm doing good. Yeah. Right. So I'll be you know I'll do a joke and they'll be like that's funny and I'm like stop responding vocally you know just laugh <laughs> or don't laugh that's yeah. the easiest part you got the easiest part of the show just sit back have fun you know but people want to participate and if they're drunk and the, you know so it's almost like they're not being they're not intending to be rude so you can't just be a jerk yeah. you know what I mean like yeah. I, I no, want I them to because I want them to like you know I mean I'm still I mean nobody knows who I am and I I can't. <laughs> Well, it's not like anyone knew who they were going to see, so I just go, "Well, thanks, man, I appreciate it," and then we keep going, and you just kind of have fun. Uh, yeah, with I've it. often thought that some people actually just go to the show fully intending to heckle. I've you know seen I mean? that, yeah, yeah. You know, like and I've them. dealt with like the jerks, but you know, I, I in my experience, luckily, no one. Um, I've had uh, I've bombed hundreds and hundreds of times, but no one's. I've never done. I've never been in a situation where people like booed. But I have heard people in the audience go, "This guy's got a, oh. you know, no, this guy's rough." And have, but it's not have even. You ever like, had somebody say, "Get off the stage"? Never like that. But I've heard people say to people at their table, like, "This guy's, ah, oh, man, he's really." Oh eating wow! It. But so they didn't intend for you to hear it, but you heard it, and that's when you know you did. You're doing bad because it's like, oh, he didn't even want me to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> which which then you just go all right? I'll wrap this up. You know, yeah, like yeah. It's, it's it's not working tonight. Yeah. How, so you actually, when you I realize it's not working, you just kind of go, okay, I better bail. I, well, I better bail. Yeah. Well, or like I find an easy out. Like you know, I like as soon as that light comes on, I'm getting off the stage. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. And and you know, the in most of the places I work, it, you know, if that happen, it doesn't happen a lot anymore. Luckily, because I've got I've kind of figured out what works for me. Yeah. But um. You know, most of the places I work, if I got off right when the light came on, and they'd be like, you know, they, they're like, yeah, yeah, you weren't, <laughs> you know, the a, a guy that runs a comedy club, in most cases, understands what's going on. Yeah, it's like you know, yeah, yeah, it, you know, you got it's off time, at the right it's time. time to save, save, uh, or it's kind of like. Yeah. It's kind of like people. But that who, doesn't happen very often. No, no, no. That's a, a maybe. That's happened a couple times. Head, but headliners, time wise, get forty five to an hour and ten, right? Yeah, yeah. On okay. The venue and how famous they are and like yeah. what they're working on. Like yeah. Some people come to town and go, "I'm doing an hour." Okay. Or some people are just like, "How about 45, 50 minutes?" Yeah. And and the middle usually does what? Like twenty to thirty, 20? depending on the venue. It's a lot of time. Yeah. It's a lot of time if it's not working. Oh yeah. Now does the headliner <laughs> have to be ready then if the middle guy is dying and the and the owner decides to kind of like I think I'll go yellow red on him. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know. I mean, you know, you want to be paying attention. In, in, in my experience, in the world that I live and work in, yeah. um, you know, I see the same people. Like the guy I'm working with this weekend, we, you know, we did something five years together. And, you know, so we kind of reminisced about it real quick. And then we're off to a great start. You know, we get mm-hmm. along and, you know, we know what we're doing. He knows what I'm doing. So yeah, when he do you knows know? when I'm done and he knows how much time I'm doing. Because right. I don't, you know, I don't go over not just mainly because it's like it just pisses everybody off but like when also do you, i don't i'm not here to what do you know it's gonna be a good here. night yeah i like uh the energy in the room before i like to stand and listen to the audience uh-huh. and, be like, and i'll i'll listen and think like okay these people are they're here to have a good time like they're already like they're not too wasted yep. you know maybe they've got a couple drinks in them but yeah and especially this weekend being thanksgiving weekend people yeah. are you know, it's like the holiday. The, it's over. We got through it. No one died. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now we can just now we can just watch a show. Who yeah. doesn't love some live entertainment? Well, you know? I I, I'm one of those guys that uh, uh, I get nervous for a comic that's not doing well, and I don't think I'm the only one. In other words, if there's a guy up there that's just not really, really starting to kill it, you know what I mean? Um, uh-huh. After about ten minutes, like. Just getting a couple of obligatory ha-has. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you kind of go, oh, boy, yeah. I'm uncomfortable now. I've seen, I've seen, it's, and that, I used to, I don't really cringe. I kind of like it. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I go, this guy, <laughs> just because uh, I know what he's going through. Oh, you evil, dark just, soul. <laughs> You're an evil man, Nate Arm Brewster. Just because I know what he's going through, you know? Sure. Like, oh, I don't, I, I know what that's like, and I'm kind of, but it's kind of fun to watch someone learn how to get through that. Because well, it's, you know. The next night, man, that guy could get a standing ovation. Sure, you don't know? Because sure. I, I can do the same joke last night that I did, or the same joke tonight that I did last night that crushed uh-huh. and could get nothing to that. Yeah, I know. So that's, it's such a mind. That's it's just such a, a bizarre. Yeah. You it's don't such know. a subjective thing going into the room wondering. Yeah. You know, I mean, what's funny to one person is not to another, and it's I've never quite understood that. But, you know, it reminds me of when I was spinning records at Jukebox. Uh, back when I was uh, in my 30s, early 30s, it was up at uh, 14 Mile and Woodward in Royal Oak, and it was it was a gas. I mean, people were just absolutely loving the place. And I did it on Thursday night. Then they did have a DJ Friday, Saturday as well. And But I did Thursday nights. It was Chuck Rose night. And I remember I'd wait until about 9 o'clock, 9, 9, 15 or so, let people get a little couple of cocktails in them, and you could tell the room was big. It was full. And I would put on something like uh, Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison. Mm -hmm. Uh, Remember, we're going back uh, 25, 30 (laughs) years. Yeah, Van Morrison, Brown Eyed Girl. Great, easy, simple dance song and short. And I would always say, if they don't dance to this, they're not going to dance at all. And so I would go like Brown Eyed Girl, who was just a couple of people out there. I thought, okay, let's see what happens. Then I go into. I didn't want to pull out the Moni Moni, but I had to pull out Billy Idol and Moni Moni, or maybe even Tommy James and the Shondells, the original, uh, from Niles, Michigan. By the way, for those of you that follow oh, the old, to Ma- old, old, Niles. old, I've been to Niles. Yeah. I've done. I've done shows in Niles. Well, That's it's crazy. The, the home of Tommy James, Tommy James and the Shondells. That. And remember one other thing as well. A very big fan of Tommy James was Mr. Tom Petty. Okay, Petty was a big fan of. Tommy James, uh, who was doing cool things with music way back in the day, long before most people were playing around with electronics, but I digress. Anyway, I knew right away if it was going to be a good night or a bad night. My Girl was another one that would usually, the slow dance would usually get them right out there. But I knew usually from day one, and I had a couple of guys, feeders, I called them in the crowd. There was a guy named Oscar who always came up, and Oscar would always grab somebody and get him out on the dance floor. And he was animated, man. He was an arm side by side, and the knees were up in the air. It was he was doing calisthenics, man. Yeah. So that was it. That so I knew then that was the only time. But I was like, but I was up in a booth, so I didn't have to have people staring at me. Great. But I had people who would come in ten minutes after I played Moni Moni and start on me like, Hey, man, Moni, Moni. play Moni Moni. I just played it. That's and it would be hilarious. like, sure, sure, I don't care. I didn't hear it. Play, Play it, again. it again. Well, shut the F up. Dude, so, I, it's so funny you say that because I, I kind of have a similar uh, a similar game plan with, with my show. I'll be like, I'll, I'll go on stage and I'm like, I'm going to start here. 
And from there, it'll tell me what to do next. Yeah. In my own head. What direction to go down, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, if they laugh at this, they'll probably like laugh, this. They'll yeah. probably like this. I'm like so, a Pandora album. So, you have to so, yeah, so, of Nate Armbruster. So, yeah, so, you all of a sudden have to move the place cards around a little bit with the jobs. Right. And I like it because it makes yeah. me work a little. It makes my, you know, it keeps me from being a robot on stage and just yeah. doing the same. Well, that's cool. No, I like that. The same jokes in the same order every night. And, yeah. And you're right, though, because I did see, I saw. Uh, there were times when Dave Collier, Tim Allen, Mike Binder, they would like they would struggle not necessarily throughout the entire show, but they would fight like hell to get him back if it mm-hmm. wasn't, or just like stay on it, stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. And I noticed that all three of those guys, Mike Binder maybe, and I hope I'm not talking out of school here, but Binder was one that would like he would kind of laugh and had that you know self-deprecating sort of a look oh, you know like I, uh, i'm not making you laugh up here am i like right okay i have fail safe um, yeah i have lines i go to and i don't think they're hacky no one's told me they're hacky but yeah. like just stuff that's happened once that i'm like that was funny like it, it kind of got me out of that because yeah. i mean i'm not i'm not the kind of guy i know some people that can just do the jokes and if it's not going well or they're not getting what they're used to getting from the audience they might lose a little confidence and then go you know, I'm eating it right now, but they don't know how to make it funny. It, then it starts to look kind of like, well, you know, like talking about watching someone bomb. Yeah. I figured out a way, at least that works for me. I don't know. I can't speak for uh, every stand up comedian. But all, you know, I mean, because everybody does something, you know, that works for them. That's kind of what you, at the end of, yeah. that's what you're working toward is what what's the best version of you on stage. Absolutely. You know? And uh, I've found a way to, to bomb. That, that, <laughs> like, here, I've never heard a comic say that. Boy, that, hey, let me like, share a little secret with you. I found a way to bomb. I've found that a way no, that nobody else is when using. it's not going good. I've got some, some, my own tricks that Do you have a handgun, maybe a you know, <laughs> so, so, yeah, M80s. Yeah. Don't make me like this, yeah, because I don't know where it's gonna go. Oh my it god, could go to the right. Could go to the center. You know, man, could go if, to the this, left. if this were about 20 years ago, I bet you you could do that. And it would be hilarious. Yeah, you know, that'd be a hilarious thing. But now it's like, man, you know, this guy's a psycho. I yeah. mean, because it's, you know, but I should say when it's not going good, I got some I got some tricks up my sleeve that, that'll get me out of a hole really quick. Or sometimes it's just, I'm not even really bombing. I just try something new and it doesn't go well. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, I tried it. And um, you just, oh. But you keep going. Yeah, I, I, you'd almost <laughs> like to say to the audience, I want you to know that I that was really funny in the car. And I thought <laughs> yeah. you guys, but you know yeah. what I'm going to do with that joke? Burp, out. And gone. I think, you know, I think you, if, you're, if you're doing well and then you go with the thing that's kind of newer or something you wanted to try or do a, a joke that you already do but change something about yeah. it and it doesn't land, they'll give you a break because they know you're funny. Because you've been funny for about ten minutes, and right. it's been going really well. Oh yeah, yeah. And they, but they're like, okay, we know he's funny. We he probably just he probably yeah. <laughs> maybe he forgot a word. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe his timing was off on that yeah. one. Yeah. Now maybe if he were to do this to it, right. I like it when people decide to correct how you could do better. Or sometimes it's just you just don't know the audience but as I, well as you should. Because you know, I I remember I was in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas once the first time I was there and. The aud- someone in the audience came up to me after and they, he, he was like, you talk too fast up there. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I, I thought this guy was an idiot. And then, you know, I realized I'm in the South. Yeah. It's it's a little slower. Oh, you it's know not, what? I, you it's know not what? that, you know, it's not, you don't have to slow down that much, but really, really just slow it down a little bit. And, and sure enough, the next show I, I slowed down and I paid more attention to what I was saying and I did significantly better. I mean, it could really? have been, been the audience huh. too, but... I mean, I don't know. That's really interesting. I always heard that if you take a southern accent, a real intense southern accent, and slow it down just a little bit, Mm -hmm. it'll sound like a British accent. Really? And I've never done that. We should do that. But I start, yeah, we should. We should take some audio and slow it down. A little lab rat with somebody who's really, I mean, but get somebody real. like a John Oliver audio, some audio of John Oliver and slow it down. You know, and just like really slow it down. Yeah. And and see if it says something like. That's interesting. Really slow it down. Yeah. Oh. You know, I I wonder, wonder, but that's what they've said. I mean, that's, again, that could be I've never heard that. That'd be a. Yeah, well, we, yeah, we should. Yeah, let's do that. We'll have to figure out some way of doing that. Um, so, all in all, um, uh, the other thing I was going to mention about comedians, 
that are really not doing well. <laughs> and once they realize I know a lot that, of them. Well, <laughs> that's too bad. I'm one of them. <laughs> well, I remember seeing Dan Patrick the other day, and um, he's got a guy on his show. He's got the Danettes, and there's a guy on the show, Fritzy, who wants to do uh, comedy. And Fritzy is a guy that um, went to, he did Caroline's, because of who he is, he's right? One of the Danettes. Yeah, so, he see, get, so he's starting. A, so he got five minutes. He can get on anyway. Yeah, five about. minutes at he Caroline's. Has an audience. He'll then when they took the show out west to uh, Los Angeles, he did five minutes at the comedy store, mm-hmm. and he did okay. He didn't do great. Right. I feel and, like. Oh. But sorry. anyway, the lo- thing I was going to tell you is that Dan Patrick said, "In comparison, you did great because the first two guys that were on even before you, I never even once." Had had the inkling to laugh. I mm-hmm. it just they said absolutely nothing funny. So I found that interesting. That like, okay, you know. So you you know you kind of. But then when the big boys started coming out, yeah. Oh man, and I think it was who was it that was on that week? It was just a week ago. It was a comedian, and it might have been. Oh, gosh. Who was it? Oh, it's going to drive me crazy. Someone well-known, famous. Well, it was like Will Ferrell or somebody oh, like, like that. Someone, was, uh, yeah. But this this was a this was a, a stage rat, somebody that, that came up who said that they technically had probably, I want to say conservatively, 30,000 hours in their right. career on stage. Right. And he said, you know, or maybe... If you want to bust that down, let's just say three to ten thousand hours. Definitely, he said. That, you know, the work. they know what's going on. Mm-hmm. They know the crowd better than anybody else. Right. Probably as well as the owner. Yeah. You know, but you're the guy up there making the money. Mm-hmm. So I, I would love to try it, and I think everybody that's ever been on the radio thinks that they have a pretty good sense oh of humor. Oh my gosh! Don't get and, me started about radio yeah. people. I feel like you're the only guy, at yeah. least in Detroit, that has ever been. I mean, you know, like pe- the way people say about you being the, um, the. Mo- I mean, you were the, just the most supportive of stand up. Well, for yeah, the most Dick part. Burton and I. Dick Burton. Dick yep. Burton and I. Yeah, um, and then um, a lot every, of- everybody kind of glommed onto it, and then the consultants got a hold of radio, yep. and they decided that no more than ninety seconds max. Right. And why well, is a comic going to get up? Why, huh? You and Heffron talked a little bit about yeah, that because yeah. he he started. Well, he didn't he really start, start in radio, but he had. Well, a, he, yeah, he did. Uh, he, he started comedy, then it, they picked him up in radio, radio, and then yeah, he went. So back. he understands both worlds. Yeah, and, and a, on a really like really intimate sl- basis. Yes, yeah, yeah. A, and so he knows how both worlds work. And yeah. then, but him talking about going to some of these, you know, I mean, I don't know if he still does. Some some people don't do promo anymore, but. You'll you'll go into a town and they'll be like, all right, we got three morning shows. You know, you'll go, they'll you'll do an interview on every morning show, yeah. like the Country Station, the Rock. You know, yeah, a lot of times and, in the same building, right? You, exactly, because you know, most most people are conglomerates now, and mm-hmm. you know, you've but, got you've got i you know iHeart, you've also got Radio.com, you've got host, Beasley Broadcasting, you've got yeah. CBS or whatever it is now, uh, Intercom, Intercom, yeah. yeah. And the the host, Thank you. I should know that, but I'm out of radio now. Uh, so yeah. what would I I'm, know? I mean, uh, you, you know a lot, yeah, yeah. But I. Um, we used to just host, hand over. We that's would, the thing, we man. would co-host with somebody. I remember anybody from, especially guys like Bill Sheff. Bill Sheff mm-hmm. was really bright, really knew sports, and would love to get in on. That's the awesome. Broad. And, and he would and just set up, are... read the paper, and uh, chewed on a cigar, never lit the thing. And uh, you know, um, he went on to write successfully, get eighteen Emmys, writing for David Letterman, did the top ten list. Pretty funny guy. Yeah. Pretty funny guy. Those, those real people, cerebral man. act. Very bright. He had to be. A, you had to bring a little intelligence to the room with Bill Sheft. But gosh, I remember so many people that would come through. Shoemaker, Greg Carey, or not uh, Drew Carey. Um, all of these people would love to sit around and co-host. They didn't want to go anywhere as long as well, there was. We usually most, always had food for most them. Most comics too. I mean, well, who a, a cool morning host, a cool morning show to sit in on, and you're just part of the morning show for a few hours, and you walk in, and you make the comic look amazing, and the comic makes you look amazing. But the ho- sometimes the host is like, you know, you, you they try to one up you, or it's like, here, just ask us, you know. So what'd you do? You know, wh- what was your first job? All right, and then they just jump right in. That's just the setup question yeah, or yeah. whatever. You know, give us three questions, yeah, and then we'll ask you. It's just real lame just, yeah. and it not sincere and. And then a lot of times, those are the bits they're going to do this weekend. I know. So someone who oh, hears no, they, it on and the and radio. And not only the bits they're going to do that weekend, but 
that's the the beast or the, the the single off the album, right? And it's they'll like, actually they'll like you know give away the the, the right. hardcore part and it's of the just show. Like maybe if you do a little research, you know, maybe you'll find something interesting about the guy, and then yeah. and then really have a connection with the audience. I don't know. I well, but the way radio is now, it's just like it's just not fun. It's like the uh, it doesn't sound fun. I should say. Once again, it's uh, Nate Armbruster. <laughs> I'm Ken Calvert. It's a Ken Calvert Show podcast, and uh, in the background, we're in a bar here, so. You can hear the sounds. You can't hear the uh, the crowd because at this point right now, Ohio State is literally crushing, and I do mean crushing, Michigan. I can't quite see the score from here, but uh, that's why we decided to uh, to to do it right as we speak here. But uh, Nate Armbruster, my guest here in the cozy studios of WKEN on the road at Brady's Bar and Grill, home of the uh, of the. Um, yeah, go ahead. You got a thirty-four nineteen on that. Yeah, State. good. Yeah, well, oh, there's lots of time left. Mm-hmm. A lot of football a lot, left. A lot of football left. Yeah. That's my. Uh, well, it's thirty-four nineteen, but you you didn't mention the fact that Ohio State is on the Michigan two-yard line, <laughs> so it's about to become forty-one. I wasn't 19. trying to yeah, bum well, everybody. Or yeah. Whatever it is, there they go. That 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 looked easy. So uh, <laughs> that's why we're having such a good time doing this podcast. Yeah, here so have another drink. On <laughs> Michigan Ohio State game. Yeah. Pour me another shot. Yeah, pour me another one, <laughs> just like the other. One, um, getting back to comedy, and we'll wrap with this. Um, you have right now ready to go live on stage an hour and ten. Could you do an hour and ten? Hmm. Not of like tight material. Yeah, me personally, no, no. But I could probably, I, I could do. I, I have an hour of material, uh-huh. but I could, I could get to an hour and ten. You know, with like. Do you have a little? Do you have a little note box, a little file card system? Do you keep it on scrap notes? Do you have post-it notes all over the house? You know, I am extremely disorganized, yeah. and uh, I have. If I really sat down and worked on it, I'd probably have five hours, but I don't. Yeah, I'd probably. But I have my the notes app in my phone is just full of random phrases. Like if I if I die, can throw yeah. my phone in the river because uh, well because. Oh. Out of context, yeah. I sound like a psycho. Well, I don't want you to die, like, and I don't want to throw well, your phone in the river. I well, might just have it cleaned up, and I'll keep it. <laughs> you, yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah. though? Yeah. Like out of, I, I don't have anything like awful on my phone. Yeah. I'm just mean like the the phrases that I type in. That yeah. I, like I'm driving, and I think of something that might be funny, yeah. and then I just type in something like a thought to go revisit. Like uh-huh. that's funny. I got to remember that and think. You know, maybe there's something. Yeah, there. you know but what? Out I, of context, I, man. Someone going through my phone, I would sound like such a psychopath. <laughs> well, I just started. I just started doing. Uh, if I think it, I got to go right to something yep. now and write it down. Just because, not so much looking to be on stage ever in my life as a comedian, but rather something that I could hopefully use on the podcast. Do you journal or anything? Um, no. I started journaling. No, I started you know, journaling. And I now- know you do, and I, I, know, I, don't, I just don't. I think that that we all basically journal if you just hold right. on to your Facebook stuff. Anyone's got and, a, you know, everybody's your, got your a, Instagram, um, LinkedIn, all that. You just go back and you see the picture that you posted with it, and you go, "Oh, I remember what I was thinking that day." I think I've gotten. I think it's. I, me personally, I think I've gotten a little funnier just by you know what. Hey. And I should do it every day. I don't do it every day, but like I'll just write down like you know, and you just give yourself a prompt like something funny that happened today. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a joke. Yeah. It doesn't have to be that funny, really. Right? Like, did something make me laugh? Or, you know, something like I had to jump. The, the landscaper today. Yeah, that's like, right. well, the, his car and, jumped and his the, car. And the great thing about that was only because, and I'm not trying to mean, I'm not trying to be mean to your auto. Oh, <laughs> you kind of you yeah, got because a, I have an old car. You've got a kind of a, that, an older that is pickup truck to jump. A yeah, car. but it's got yeah. like the, that bad boy batteries right up front where you yeah. can just go clip clip. Exactly. Where the new ones now is like I don't think the car has. Yeah, a you got to remove a bumper and a yeah. tail light, <laughs> yeah. and you got to get and it's yeah. like what? And then you have, you have to put to, it up on a hoist. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous, and then man. You have to, yeah, you have to take the oil pan off. Yeah, and then if you do it correctly, you can find the actual battery. Buy American, everybody. Yeah, yeah, That's absolutely. Right. Uh, well, yeah. That's but exactly. They're, I was they're really gonna, doing yeah. it well, aren't they? I was going to mention the fact that uh, uh, as we finally wrap it up here, we've gone, gee, just about thirty minutes. But it's uh, it's time flies when you're having a good time and laughing it up just a little bit with my buddies, and uh, the crowd's starting to like really kind of turn angry here. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. It's not looking good at all. Oh, you know what I wanted to say? One thing. Speaking of comedians and people that like get all in on football games today, it's Michigan, Ohio State. Michigan has traveled to Ohio State. Michigan is more than likely not going to win, but I would love to be surprised. But I noticed. Well, that's odd. 
it's uh, the microphone over there. That's the microphone. Oh, that's somebody's that's phone. Mic. Yeah. yeah that, oh, phone. I'm sorry. It was on somebody's table. <laughs> yeah. I hid the microphone here in the bar. <laughs> well, that's a good sound in the background. That's a really good sound in the background. But anyway, getting, <laughs> <laughs> the producer in yeah, is get, just like, wow, uh, I really uh, mic this place I, great. Yeah, I liked it the way we mic'd it. That's just perfect. One thing I didn't like, though, was the fact that all these preemptive uh, congrats, boys, you got this. You know, this year it's all ours. Yeah. You know, and a comedian buddy of ours who I think I'm going uh, to leave nameless because I like him. I told you about this. Uh, tweeted before the game. I want to thank Jim Harbaugh in advance for bringing home a well-deserved victory. Ain't no chance Ohio State's going to. And it's like, I really wish you wouldn't have done that. Right. I really, really wish you wouldn't have done that. Well, it's a poor attitude to have. Me? Just, well, no, no, not you. With yeah. him. Well, I, I always. Well, because it's kind of, it's fine. I, guess, I always go with, I, I go with the safe side. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. That way I'm not as disappointed. Well, there's that. And then also it's like, <laughs> you jinxed them. Thank you, Dr. Nate. It's kind of a jinx, you know? Yeah. Like, where I, it's like, why you, don't not go into in. The, yeah. Like, go, you know, like, as an athlete, I'm sure most athletes would be like, you know, you go to watch a big game and it's, I'm sure they're going into this game like, we got this. But at the same time, it's like, you still got to work. Yeah. You're still going up against top level athletes. Absolutely. You know, uh, they're capable of beating you, but you still have to be better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and hopefully that drives you yeah. to well, be better, you know? Well, Jim Harbaugh is going to have some splaining to he do after this. Well, he gives out, see, that kind of e- that ego that guy has, though. Yeah, imagine well, no, that'd be a, a separate more, podcast. But imagine if he was a little more humble, how how much better this would be it's when hard they to, win. It's hard to say if he's humble or, or if he's if he's off the charts because he's well, just, you know what I mean? he tries to be that real mellow sort of a guy. But let's stay on topic real quickly because <laughs> we're out of time here. <laughs> we're out of time and the bar is about to throw us out anyway. Yeah. But uh, it's... Uh, uh, WKEN, I'm Ken Calvert, Nate Armbruster. I was just going to end with the fact that comedy is, uh, is, is really something that I just don't know. A lot of people think they're funny because they sit around with their friends and they, and they make their friends laugh. That does not necessarily relate to the fact that you can just take that no. up on stage and, hey, I'm a comedian and make a living. Man, there's a lot of work and there's a lot of time on the road. Spending it, uh, just a, a mm-hmm. ton of time in really dumpy hotels. You go through a lot. Yeah, yeah. But that's there's something sort of romantic about it at the end oh, of yeah. the day when you can look back, isn't oh, yeah. it? Yeah. So. I think so. I I have my I have really low points. Yeah. <laughs> personally, aspirations to be on uh, a television show or any of that. I would love to. Yeah. I would do. I mean, I, you know, they say you should get specific with your goals, but I would love to try any. I mean, like acting. The, I mean. It interests me. I don't need to be like a, you know, like a Shakespearean actor. Yeah, I would no. love to try. I would love to be on a sitcom, though. Oh, I would yeah. love to at least try it. I'd yeah. like to be like a. I'd like to be the neighbor. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I don't no, know. If but... I, get, I don't know if I'm a good lead. But then there's like that. That would be awesome. Uh, I've been writing a lot lately. Like I've been working on a few scripts that I that I've just projects that I just yeah. have been trying to. And I'm I'm like I'm really loving the process of it. The same way I like you know trying stand up and like learning how to perform and write jokes and you know it's like the same thing it's i'm getting the same satisfaction out of it and i'm I'm really enjoying that i had breakfast with mike binder about two weeks ago and we were talking about you know the idea of somebody i i used to get this all the time somebody would write a song yeah and they would um and they would say hey can you get this to bob seeger it's a natural i said well i i i'll take it but i'll tell you what he's going to do with it he's going to shred it he's going to put it in a dumpster he's never going to listen to it and well, that's mean. Yeah, it is mean. But here's the deal: if you ever hear Bob Seger sing a song and it sounds something like what you kind of mm-hmm. handed off to me to hand to him, right. you're going to sue his ass off, saying, "Hey, it's that was my idea. Yeah. You stole it." So no, don't give me it. Just take it and take it to an agent and have your agent shop your song. Right. Because it's impossible. Look at at all the times that we've seen. The Beatles get sued by Queen or something mm-hmm. like that because of not that did not happen. Right. But the Beatles were sued by I think the Chiffons yeah. for to do run run and yeah. I forget what the George Harrison song was. But it's it's an and, and not unlike comedy and I know we're bouncing all over the place. I don't think anybody is capable of, of writing a truly unique joke or having no. a unique idea. La- last but, night. And the same thing with scripts. Yeah. yeah. Last night alone, three comics on the show, MC, opener, headliner, the three of us, we all 
had a similar like same subject matter. Yeah. Like, uh, there there were like two or three bits that we all did that were same vein, same idea. Like what was it about? Like about losing weight or eating better. Oh. And like I got, and I've been I've been doing this new and like just because I've lost a bunch of weight in the last year and yeah. I've just been talking about it yeah. and it's just funny how we the jokes are different so they, there's no it's not a problem but it's like god we you know we sound so hacky we all yeah. have the same stuff if i if i were we to have go, the same idea you know they're like god this guy lost weight too yeah if i were to go up on stage <laughs> right now what i would do is and i think it would, i actually think it would work uh i would just start doing the disclaimers for the pills <laughs> for all the pills mm-hmm. because i take a just a ton right of pills for stupid things because i hurt well, my body has to offset the yeah, other well one. the body you know i did a lot of damage to the body when i was younger you know kids i would like to remind you that no matter what you hear smoking vaping whatever it might be if you, <laughs> you don't need it the lungs aren't you know they're, they're it's not a really good plan and i'll tell you what <laughs> drinking virtually every single day all day you know you take the cigarettes and the alcohol that'll kind of catch up with you right you know there are little things like blood pressure and other things <laughs> that'll eventually kind of go whoa that's way up there <laughs> but i love whenever they show something uh on, on the news about uh, not on the news i take that back show something on television about any drug Mm-hmm. Any drug at all. I'm surprised that there's one not uh, rolling off. There should be some sort of medication for what uh, Michigan fans are going to be feeling after this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but but it's always like eight seconds max of what it does. If you're having great body pain, why not try Lyrica? You may want to try a, drive a high low into a wall. Yeah. You may never take a dump again. You know, I mean, it's like you may want to hang yourself with bed sheets, especially the ones your wife just bought. You know, yeah. it's like. Huh? Yeah. Why do I want to take that? So I just thought if you could just memorize the cadence and really get it down quickly, yeah, that would kill. No, that would. It would be a funny bit. It would. But you got to be a guy who's actually can say, I know because I take these. Right. Pills. It means something different coming from you than me because I'm this you absolutely know, I'm this millennial looking kid. Absolutely happened to me and anybody that knows. Uh, if you, I have, I've had like four major back surgeries. Fell off my roof trying to get an ice dam. Ooh. Yeah, that'll do it to you. Laminectomy, discectomy, back fusion, and a full neck. C2 to T3. Oh, my God. Stuff I should never know how to pronounce. Right. Okay? So, anyway, when we were coming out of surgery, they'll naturally give you oxy. They don't do that anymore, and good, because I didn't like it anyway. One thing oxy does really, really well is constipate. Makes everything better. Oh, boy. But except it also the, constipates the... the hell out of you. <laughs> and so, um, I went up to... Um, I went up to uh, CBS, and I had a whole list of pills that I was taking, and I said, do any one of these cause constipation in a very quiet voice? And she goes, all of them. <laughs> they all cause constipation. Oh, somebody's getting a text. Wow. <laughs> so cool to do it like this. Well, listen, I know you got to get on stage here shortly, so thanks for taking time, Nate Armbruster, to sit down and be a member of the, uh, the club, the casual club. The, the casual studios of WKEN, where every day is the weekend. And uh, as we like to say to uh, all the comedians that come on the show, get out there and break a vocal cord, will you? Thank you, Ken. It's all always right. a pleasure. All right. Talk to you soon. All righty. Be well. Bye-bye, everybody. You can subscribe to the Ken Calvert Show podcast on Apple iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. It's also available by going directly to www.thekencalvertshow.com. You can reach Ken at kencalvertpodcast at gmail.com. The preceding program is the property of Ken Calvert and may not be rebroadcast without the written permission of Ken Calvert.